Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad, and today we're looking at how to breathe. Yep, yeah, I know. There's more to talk about than you think. We're going to look at the O2H2 generator, the oxygen tank, the air vent, and the oxygen farm. We'll look at when to use them in different scenarios and also why it's not necessarily the best practice to go straight for an O2H2 generator to fill your bottles. It isn't? Well, let's find out. <laughs> So I assume you know to hit J to open and close your helmet. You know to top up your suit oxygen at a med bay that has an O2H2 generator containing ice attached. You know about oxygen bottles increasing the amount of oxygen you can carry and that they are refillable. And that to refill your bottles, you place them in an O2H2 generator that contains ice and is set to refill bottles. But what if you don't have ice? So in this scenario, let's assume that we're on a planet and we haven't managed to find any ice yet, but we need to refill our bottles because we're going to maybe go to space. Because we don't have ice, there's no point in using the O2 generator because it needs ice to work. But we're surrounded by oxygen, so can we not just grab that oxygen, shove it into a bottle and away we go? Well, yes we can. And here's how. I'm going to use an oxygen tank I'm going to lie the oxygen tank down that way so I can easily access both ends. Obviously, I'm in creative mode here just to save us a lot of time. Next, we're going to add to the oxygen tank an air vent. And I'm going to place the air vent on the end of the oxygen tank. You could be aware that air vents are used to put oxygen into buildings, and we'll have a look at that later. But they can also extract oxygen. If I switch it to depressurize... You see the lights have gone blue, which means it's busy doing something. If we go into the control panel for the oxygen tank, we can see that it's filling up. And it's filling it up at a, a reasonable pace. It's not actually that bad. So that's just simply pulling air from around us because we're on the Earth-like planet with plenty of oxygen through the air vent and condensing it nicely in the oxygen tank. So here we've got an empty oxygen bottle just pick that up and let's have a look at it we can see there there's zero oxygen in it if i go to the oxygen tank and drop it in there we'll give it a second to think about what it's doing it's not doing anything oh well that must be because we haven't told our oxygen tank that it needs to refill bottles now if we go back to the inventory we'll see it's filled it already so in no time at all we could have a stack of oxygen bottles filled in this container for pretty much free now just as a disclosure this platform isn't a magical platform i've got a reactor there so obviously this does need power now this system needs oxygen in the air around you to be able to work but it only needs a small amount if there is any oxygen in the air it will pull it in through this vent and very slowly but surely start filling this oxygen tank and you can see here it's already past 25 percent so what about if we were on another planet? Here we are on the surface of the alien planet. A hostile environment that's very green. Now I'm going to repeat the exercise that we did on the Earth-like planet just to show you how it works here. We want the oxygen tank there. I'm going to put the air vent on the end of it and I'm going to Set the air vent to depressurize. It's thinking about it. Mm, we got one blue light. So there is some oxygen in the air and it is processing it. Let's just have a look and see how quickly it's doing that. Now, just so you know, an oxygen bottle that you use on your person holds 120 liters. Now, there's 8,500, 8,800, 9,000 liters. So even on the alien planet, without using any ice, although we're surrounded by snow, we're still getting oxygen through this simple little system. And again, obviously, this base has power, so this system can run. So what happens if we were somewhere where there is no oxygen at all? Like the moon, for example. Let's place down the oxygen tank and we'll add the air vent to the end of that. Like that. I'm just gonna go in and say depressurize. And let's see what happens. Oh, that's still yellow. Mm, okay. 
and nothing's happening yeah it's because there is no oxygen here hence that being yellow there's an issue so to create oxygen when you're on the moon without ice you need an oxygen farm let's try building one i'm going to place down this conveyor and on the conveyor i'm going to add just show you it here there it is an oxygen farm so let's add one of those to the top now it's important to get this the right way around because it does have a, a sort of a front and a back and it's quite hard to see from there there we go where the four dots are I'm just about to point with my finger in real life there that's the in if you like that's the most efficient side or that's the face of it if you like so I need to rotate that so the four dots which is the gauge is facing the sun as best it can anyway there you can see there if I had it the other way on so these dots are on the side it won't be as efficient and it works from both sides and you can see there the gauge is going up it takes a few minutes and it's telling us how efficient it is and it's pretty much pointing straight at the sun it's not bad but it is on a slight angle but that's okay so that's working now let's just have a look and see exactly what it's doing in terms of oxygen uh not a lot let's give it 10 minutes yep still not doing anything so what exactly is the oxygen farm doing well, let's have a look it's outputting 0.94 liters a minute so it's detected that there is something in there but it's not a lot so how do we improve that well the simple solution to that and i'm sure you know what it is is you add hundreds of these things <laughs> So let's see how many oxygen farms it takes to actually make a difference. Because we've already got one, so that would be 15. And let's put some more down the right way around, like that. Same thing. So now we've got 15 in total, counting the first one. So they're now at the maximum output that they can do in their position. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, we've got seven liters. So just a reminder, an oxygen tank takes 120 litres to fill. So it is going, but it's pretty slow. But that is a sort of an, an emergency means of gathering some oxygen, although it's quite expensive because you've got to make all of these. However, you could have a massive oxygen farm on the moon just to top up the oxygen tank so you can refill your bottles. But to be honest with you, if that's the case, you're best off going to find some ice. So we're back on the alien planet and while we've been away this little air vent has pulled in enough oxygen to fill this tank and let's have a look at how much that is that's 100,000 liters that's a lot of bottles you can fill and we're inside a nice airtight base but unfortunately the air inside isn't breathable ow ow so we can oxygenate this room or pressurize it by adding an air vent Let's do that now. There's our air vent. I'm going to put it on that conveyor junction there, which connects to outside. It's having a look and it's green, which means, yep, it's fine. It will work. That means the room is airtight. And just to show you, if I open the door, it's now complaining it's yellow. The room isn't airtight anymore. Give it a second. There we go. It's back to green, but it needs to pull the air from somewhere. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place another air vent outside on the other side of that junction. Just there. And I'm going to set this air vent to depressurize. So now this air vent, you can see the light's gone blue, is pulling in what oxygen it can find in the atmosphere through the system. And if we go inside now, we'll close the door. We can see, oh, there it goes. It's already doing its job. That air vent is pushing the oxygen into the room and it's on two bars of green. I'm going to open up my helmet. I'm okay. Yep, I'm fine. Let's just have a look at my character. Yes, definitely got my helmet open. I'm all right. It's yep, just gone to four bars now and you can see, you can see the effect of the air coming in has, has stopped, which means the room is fully pressurized and it's safe to walk around without your helmet so you can enjoy your cup of cosmic coffee or whatever it is. So now we've got a pressurized room and we want to go outside. As soon as I open that door, all this air is going to rush out. Let me close my helmet first. There we go. We open the door. There's the air rushing out and it's complaining. There's a leak 
and the room is no longer pressurized. Close the door. And when we get to four, there we go, it's stopped and the room's pressurized. So if you want to go outside without losing the pressure in the room, it's not a big deal in this case because it's effectively free. We're not using any ice, we're just pulling the oxygen that's outside and condensing it, if you like, and pushing it into the room. So it doesn't really matter if it vents outside, but if we want to keep this room airtight, all we need to do is simply add a very basic airlock system. And if I do a search for a door, we'll just use the stock doors. Make sure it's the right way around. Just like that. Come out of there so we can see it. And I'm going to put my light on as well. There we go. So now we've got our outside door. We come in. We've got effectively a little corridor. And we have another door here. And you can guess how this is going to work. We come through here. Close that door. When we open this door, we'll lose the air that's in this room. But that's all. So there's just that little bit of air from in there. Oh, helmet back down. There we go. And if we have a look through the window, we might be able to see. Yeah, you can just see there, the four lights are still on, on the air vent, and that room's still pressurized. And when we go back inside, we'll go in here, close that door, open this door, have a look. It's just quickly topped up, that little bit of air that was from outside, that was trapped in here, that escaped into the room. It just topped that up and that's fine. So that's a quick skip through the options that you have for gathering oxygen, filling bottles, and what you could do in different environments. A slightly more exciting version of this would be if I showed you how to create an automated airlock. It's quite involved, but I'm willing to tackle it if you want me to. Let me know in the comments. If there are any other tutorials you'd like to see, let me know. I can only do the videos when I have an idea of what to do the videos on. So the more you suggest, the more chance there are of me doing more of these videos and less of the seven days to die videos. Thanks very much for watching. Please give the video a like and make sure you subscribed and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.